Blessings on top of blessings out there to all my brethren. For those who don't believe, please receive the free GIFT of salvation. This is brought to you by U.G.L.Yeshua. I'm Darius, and this is JCITB TV. That's Jesus Christ is the best televangelism. Not television, but televangelism. And all that means is I'm just using this digital space to spread the gospel and all Yahweh's truth. Oh, come on! As always, make sure you put the pressure on that like button, say what you say in the comments, and hit that notification, share, and subscribe button so that you can come fellowship with us every time we drop something new. Now let's get into it. This episode here is called Pagans Want Their Holidays Back. I'll just need a few minutes of your time I'll explain how this episode came about a little later on. I know this time of year, it gets a little divisive amongst the brethren in Christ when it comes to this holiday, especially Christmas. I hope this message isn't taken as hate, judgmental, or me trying to start any issues amongst us. I have to state that because the posts and comments get crazy around this time of year on social media, and it gets really out of hand and really crazy. Sometimes things are written and they can be taken the wrong way depending on how the person is reading the message. So I don't want this message to come off as me trying to condemn or belittle anyone. I just want you to hear my heart and know that I teach on these things because I truly care for the family in Jesus. I know many who agree with my stance sometimes can come off harsh and condemning and argumentative and sometimes it causes some not to even listen. But don't put all of us in that same boat. Forgive me if I ever came across in that manner. Those are not my intentions. And sometimes, as a believer, we can have so much zeal and not realize that we're coming in a way that's not edifying at all. As family in Christ, we need to hold each other accountable and have each other's back. It's not about us winning debates just so we can say that we're right. Oh, I won that debate. But it's about getting to the bottom of what's right. We're all still a work in progress. Sometimes we have to bear with each other and hear each other out. Now my issue is when someone is not coming off in that manner, as I just explained, but are sincerely trying to help you see the harm in this, and you start to treat us the same way those people treated you. Guys, even if some of you guys don't come off like that, you just ignore your brother or sister in Christ who is trying to educate you on this specific topic and say we're Pharisees, judgmental, and condemning, when we're not even coming off in that manner. My problem with that is we are family in Christ. We should hear one another out. If one of us is coming to you with something that is truly on our heart, trying to speak to another brother or sister in Christ, you as a brother or sister should care enough to hear us out, see if what we're saying has any factual evidence. Now with this Christmas topic, we already did a full podcast episode on this some years ago. And trust me, we researched heavy. We went back to the origins of the holiday to give you proper information. We wanted to do our due diligence and make sure that we were accurate on what we were teaching. So I suggest you guys watch that so you can see in full detail what we are talking about. You can watch that on our YouTube channel at u.g.l.yeshua. Now, this video here is not about to go that deep into the whole history of Christmas. This video is about a conversation I had on TikTok with a pagan about these holidays. And believers participating in this holiday seem to ignore this and don't understand that people who practice paganism are still around today. It's a popular religion that has been around since the biblical days. You can't ignore it and act like it doesn't exist. So what I'm going to share with you is a clear example that secular holidays belong to paganism and are still being practiced today by pagans. So here's how this small conversation went. Let's get into that. So on my TikTok platform, I posted a video about Taylor Swift basically performing witchcraft and rituals at her concert. The video caught a lot of traction and many people were sharing, liking, reposting, and commenting. I had so many people who practice witchcraft and who practice paganism comment on this video and give their two cents coming to her defense. So I'm gonna read one that stuck out to me the most and this small conversation is what inspired me to make this short video. But this comment made me want to briefly speak on this topic but coming from another angle and this is where we're at right now. So one gentleman who was a pagan commented on his first comment that said, and I quote, the fact that y'all think witchcraft is satanic when it's the furthest thing from it and y'all had no issue stealing holidays from us. Then he wrote to me again and said, if it wasn't for pagans, there would be no Thanksgiving, Yule, Easter, Halloween, none of it. And y'all stole it from us and perverted it. 
So for those of you who don't know, he mentioned Yule. Now Yule is what we call Christmas today. I say all that to say to my fellow believers that paganism is real and it's still being practiced today. All of these secular holidays that you partake in, such as Christmas, Halloween, Easter, etc., are all holidays that belong to the pagan religion. Can't escape that. And I just read one of the comments from one of the pagans that were coming on my comments. I, like I said before, I had pagans, I had people on witchcraft all coming defending these holidays, saying that us Christians stole all of their holidays. So these are things as believers that we should look into. Like we should say to ourselves, wow, are pagans and people who practice witchcraft really claiming these holidays and saying that it's theirs and that us believers in Christ actually took them and did something else with them? That doesn't raise any eyebrows with you guys. And this is why I felt it was important for me to do an episode like this so that I can show you this stuff, you know? Like, if I was in a position you guys were, and this is a holiday that I celebrated and that I loved, and somebody brought this to my attention, I'm gonna first say, show me. I'm gonna first say, you know what? Let me go do some research on that. Let me see what these pagans are saying about this stuff. And I'm gonna dig into it. Check this video clip out about some pagans also talking about the same thing that I'm bringing up to you right now. Out here who think that Christmas is the original holiday at this time of year, and we kind of gently, I know Frank and I kind of gently nudge our Christian <laughs> friends and say, just remember, you got all this stuff from us because we started this. <laughs> the tradition of Santa actually comes from the tradition of the Oak King and the Holly King. And Santa is actually the Holly right. King, who dies at this time of year and gives way to the Oak King to bring back the springtime because the Oak King reigns during the spring and summer and the Holly King reigns during the fall and winter. And so Santa's ride is kind of his passing the hat off to the, the Oak King for the spring and summer. This is a very pagan holiday because it is. Also the Christmas tree, our Christmas tree or our Yule tree as we refer to it, is a very pagan holiday and what they're doing is bringing in the greenery into your house so that you're bringing in life and vitality and all that the evergreens represent. They have nothing to do with Jesus, Yeshua, no matter how you try to dress it up. And another thing I want to point out is that believers need to stop using that verse in Romans 14, 5 saying, one person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. Now listen, that verse is not talking about pagan holidays. It's talking about holy days. This is not a verse to run back to in order to justify celebrating worldly pagan holidays. Now I say that to say that Father doesn't receive any kind of worship. He requires us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Then most will say, stop taking that Jeremiah verse about the tree out of context. And my reply to that is, I don't even need that verse. There's so many other things that are opposed to this holiday in scripture that I don't even have to talk about that one. So we can leave the Jeremiah Christmas tree out of this conversation. Some of the things we have to ask ourselves is, what if Jesus looks at putting a Christmas tree up in your house as something detestable to him, to him due to its origins? Do you guys ever ask that question? A lot want to use the excuse and say, it doesn't mean that to me. I use this day to glorify and worship him and celebrate his birth. When you know that he was not born on that day, you choose to pick the same day the rest of the world picks to celebrate their pagan gods. You pick the same day every year to give Jesus extra worship while adding all the symbolism that the pagans use to represent their culture and their gods. My question is, why won't you pick a month like May, August, or September to do this? Why don't you pick those months to put up a tree, to give out gifts, to make it an extra special day of worship for our Messiah? A day to be jolly and have the spirit of giving and visiting family and eating and doing all that. You won't, because it doesn't fit the criteria. Let's just be honest, guys. And it doesn't fit the tradition so you guys won't do it on your own and also if that day is supposed to be about worshiping the messiah's birth why is everyone else getting gifts then these are things we need to ask ourselves as believers us as believers need to sit back and really check ourselves really ask these questions year after year you see your fellow brothers and sisters bringing these things up 
Don't you guys want to ask, is there any truth about this? Let me go look into it. Deuteronomy 12. When the Lord your God cuts off before you the nations and you disposes them and dwell in their land, take care that you be not ensnared to follow them after they have been destroyed before you and that you not inquire about their gods saying, how did these nations serve their gods? That I also may do the same. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way for every abominable thing that the Lord hates they have done for their gods. For they even burned their sons and daughters in the fire to their gods. Deuteronomy 12, 29 to 31. So hear me out, brothers and sisters. If you, what we call Christmas, is a pagan practice that gives worship to their God and celebrating it is a detestable thing to the Most High God, do you think he's okay with you partaking in it just because you threw his name on it? Just because you sprinkled his son's name on it? Doesn't this stuff make you want to think twice? Doesn't it make you want to think a little deeper, dig a little deeper? This is something we all need to do as family in Christ, you understand? If you're hearing testimonies of pagans today telling you that these things that we do in the name of Christmas are things they've been practicing for hundreds, thousands of years, doesn't that raise a red flag? You can't get away with, well, we're taking it and making it holy. Yahweh doesn't work like that. You may be sincere, but you're mistaken. God doesn't want to be worshipped the way the rest of the world worships their gods. Now, true fact, Christmas was illegal until 1836 around the time of the Puritans, before the real believers were not partaking in this holiday because they knew it was pagan and demonic. And if you were caught participating in it, you would get fined five shillings. Don't just believe me. Go look it up, guys. Now, a lot of people, they want to bring up uh, St. Nick and say he was a Christian bishop. He was a giving man and things of that nature. He was a good guy. He gave a lot and helped a lot of people. This is what they resort to. First, y'all need to dig deeper into the origins of St. Nick because there were a lot of pagan attributes that were added onto his character. True. Plus, even if all that were true, and he was a caring and giving man of God, but still was in favor of Christmas, are we now supposed to put away the teachings of our father because a man is given the okay on it? No, that's the problem, my family, with today's church. We look to men for authority instead of God. We look to men of faith who have a name and is in support of your beliefs to justify it. This is the reason we are not to be respecters of men. Why? Because men are flawed. Men make mistakes and men don't always do things the right way. But if we're going to use that logic of a popular man of God, let's see what Charles Spurgeon has to say about Christmas. He says, we have no superstitious regard for times and seasons. Certainly, we do not believe in the present ecclesiastical arrangement called Christmas. First, because we do not believe in any mass at all. But abhor it, whether it be sung in Latin or in English. Secondly, because we find no scriptural warrant whatsoever for observing any day as the birthday of the Savior. And consequently, its observance is a superstition because not of divine authority. Superstition has fixed most positively the day of our Savior's birth, although there is no possibility of discovering when it was occurred. It was not till the middle of the third century that any part of the church celebrated the birth of our Lord. And it was not till long after the Western church had set the example that the Eastern adopted it because the day is not known. Probably the fact is that holy days were arranged to fit in with the heathen festivals. We venture to assert that if there be any day in the year of which we may be pretty sure that it was not the day on which our Savior was born. It is the 25th of December. Regarding not the day, let us give God thanks for the gift of his dear son. How absurd to think we could do it in the spirit of the world with a Jack Frost clown, a deceptive, worldly Santa Claus, and a mixed program with sacred truth, with fun, deception, and fiction. If it be possible to honor Christ in the giving of gifts, I cannot see how, while the gift giver and the recipient are all in the spirit of the world, the Catholics 
and high church Episcopalians may have their Christmas one day in 365, but we have a Christ gift the entire year. This was said on December 24th, 1871. Upright men strove to stem the tide, but in spite of all their efforts, the apostasy went on to the church, with the exception of a small remnant, was submerged under pagan superstition. That Christmas is a pagan festival, is beyond all doubt. The time of year and the ceremonies with which it is celebrated prove its origin. Those who follow the custom of observing Christmas follow not the Bible, but pagan ceremonies. That was Charles Spurgeon. Again, guys, make sure you check out that episode that we did a couple years ago. We got into an in-depth detail discussion on this thing called Christmas. We got into the origins of it. We spoke about all the symbolism. I guarantee if you guys give it a chance, you would actually be like, wow, I never looked at it that way. I never thought those things, you know? If you just go on Google, I'm gonna do it right now. I got my phone out. I'm gonna go on Google and I'm gonna put, what is Yule? Let's see what they say. So Wikipedia, Yule is a winter festival historically observed by the Germanic people that was incorporated into Christmas during the Christianization of the Germanic peoples. In present times, adherents of some new religious movements celebrate Yule independently of the Christian festivals. This is Britannica. Yule festival observed historically by Germanic peoples and in modern times, primarily by neo-pagans, coinciding with the winter solstice, December 21, through December 22nd in the Northern Hemisphere, June 20 to the 21st in the Southern Hemisphere. The pre-Christian festival originated in Scandinavia and was later subsumed along with other pagan celebrations into the Christian holiday of Christmas. Some modern celebrations of Yule attempt to recreate ancient traditions while others have been adopted and reimagined to suit contemporary personal and religious practices. Let's go to another one. It's Old Farmer's Almanac. What is Yule? Today, Yule and Yuletide are largely synonyms with Christmas and Christmas Tide. The meaning behind them is quite different from the other Christian holidays. Yule comes from Old English Geo, which shares a history with the equivalent word from Old Norse. Both these words refer to midwinter festival centered around the winter solstice, which traditionally marked the halfway point of the winter season. After the solstice, the shortest day of the year, the days again begin to grow larger. So it's thought that Yule was a celebration of the reappearance of the sun and the fertile land's rebirth. Cosmopolitan, how to celebrate Yule. Ready to party? The pagan celebration of the winter solstice is known as Yule and it's one of the oldest winter celebrations in the world. It simultaneously celebrates the shortest day of the year, midwinter, and the return of the sun. It is also a festival of rebirth. Yule marks the point at which the sun begins to return to us, aka when the days begin to lengthen again. But the winter solstice is the darkest day of the year, so Yule is both a time of reflection and celebration. Study.com, Yule definitions, traditions, and celebrations. I'm going to read some more, folks, all right? Many people are familiar with Christmas, but Yuletide may be a less commonly understood concept. Yule, also called Yuletide, is a winter celebration that has been celebrated in parts of Europe for thousands of years. It is a festival that marks the middle of winter. Yule is thought to have originated in the ancient Norse tradition of Joel, J-O-L. And the word also appears in Old English as Geo, G-E-O-L. Like many winter festivals, Yule is associated with light, fire, and feasting. Because of cultural changes that have taken place over the centuries, it can be challenging to determine precisely which celebrations were originally associated with Yule and which ones have been added or adopted from other traditions. Today, Yule is sometimes used as a synonym for Christmas, though the two holidays have different histories. Wrench Store, what Wrench Store got to say? 
Yule comes from the Old Norse Jo and Old English Geo, which was a season of hunting after the harvest was done. This fell in what we now call December, so it eventually became associated with the Christmas holiday. The first recorded use of the noun Yuletide, according to Wikipedia, was in 1475. The Yuletide season lasted from the end of November to the beginning weeks of January, but the Feast of Yule lasted three days over the winter solstice and marked the beginning of a new year. Yule was similar to Passover in Jerusalem before the temple was destroyed. Oh, we bring the Bible into this? For Passover, the Jewish people would bring lambs, birds, and other animals for sacrifice. The blood would be offered on the altar and the meat cooked for the Passover meal. According to Norse historian and saga translator Lee M. Hollander, every nine years, Germanic Norse farmers were compelled to come to the temple hove and make sacrifices and feast over a prescribed period of time during Yuletide. Yule was celebrated in Germanic centuries with animal sacrifice where the sanctified blood was then used to paint the altar, temple post, and the supplicant himself as part of the ritual. He was literally washed in the blood. This was followed by feast, storytelling, and drinking around a large communal fire. In Gretis Saga Yule, is described as a time of greatest mirth and joy amongst men. All that's interesting. Also called Yuletide, the pagan celebration of the winter solstice known as Yule was observed by ancient Germanic peoples for hundreds of years. Christmas time, Noel, Nativity, Yuletide, even the many different words we use to describe the Christian holiday that celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ reflects how the festival was born of a wide array of cultures for the Vikings, Germanic tribes, and other pagan peoples of pre-Christian Europe. The celebration known as Yule was originally meant to honor the winter solstice. The Yule Yuletide celebration commemorated the events of the wanting year and honored the gods with a festival of song, food, drink, and sacrifice. But with the steady spread of Christianity throughout Europe, many pagan beliefs and celebrations, including Yule, were stamped out. To this day, however, hints of these ancient faiths and rituals can be found in some of the most popular Christmas traditions. This is the story of Yule, the Germanic pagan winter festival that helped inspire most of the modern celebration of Christmas. It's sacred Earth Journeys Traditions and symbols of Yule. So Yule is a traditional holiday holding roots in various northern European traditions of the pre-Christian Germanic peoples. When the days grew colder and the nights grew longer, people of ancient times would light candles and gather around fires to lure back the sun. They would bring out their stores of food and enjoy feasting and festivities. Dances were danced and songs were sung and all would delight in decorating their homes. Such were the Yule traditions of those times. Traditions similar to what we call Christmas, Yule eventually underwent Christianized Reformation. Evergreens were cut and brought indoors to symbolize life, rebirth, and renewal. They were thought to have power over death because their green never faded, and they were used to defeat winter demons and hold back death and destruction because of their strength and tenacity. They were also believed to encourage the sun's return. Christmas tree. The holly. Yule, symbol of hope, holly. Holly, which represents the masculine element, uh, was often used to decorate doors, windows, and fireplaces because of its prickleness. It was thought to capture or ward off evil spirits before they could enter a home and cause harm. The holly leaves, symbolic of the holly king, represent hope. The mistletoe, which represents the female element, also holds much importance as it was used by druids, priests, and the special ceremonies during the winter solstice. They believe that its green leaves represented the fertility of the mother goddess and its white berries the seed of the forest god of Oak King. Druids would harvest the mistletoe from the sacred oaks trees with golden sifts, and maidens would gather underneath the tree to catch the falling branches, preventing them from falling to the ground. For if this happened, it was believed that all sacred energy in a plant 
would pour back into the earth. The branches, sprigs, were then divided and distributed to be hung over doorways as protection against thunder, lightning, and, e and other evils. Mistletoe was also worn as an amulet for fertility and hung over the headboard. Tree, an important pagan symbol. The Yule tree was also another imported symbol in pagan tradition. Originally, it represented the tree of life or the world tree among early pagans. In ancient times, it was decorated with gifts people wanted to receive from the gods. It was adorned with natural ornaments such as pine cones, berries, and other fruit, as well as symbols sacred to the gods and goddesses. In some holiday traditions, garlands of popcorn and berries were strung around the tree so that visiting birds could feed off the tree as well. My believers in Christ. How do you feel about that? Now, if you got this far in the video and you heard everything that I said, does it bother you at all? Does it raise any antennas? I just went on Google and just typed in what is Yule. And these are all the different pages they gave me. So the information is out there. This should make you guys want to dig deeper into it and hear what we've been saying. Does this have anything to do with our Lord and Savior? Every single thing down from the Christmas tree to the ornaments to the Christmas caroling to the mistletoe to the gift giving, everything that is associated with Christmas that we want to use around this time of year has pagan roots attached to it. It's been going on before Christmas was a thing out here in America. Christians didn't adopt this until late it was going going on hundreds of years before we even adopted it that don't bother you guys do you think christ is okay with you guys celebrating this stuff you can't use he knows my heart it's one thing if you're ignorant to something but when somebody provides something to you when somebody provides proof to you you got to do something about that i made a post on Facebook a couple years ago or last year and they said this was around Halloween you know all the Christians believers in Christ you know exposing Halloween and how evil it is and well not all of them a lot of them were even partaking in that that's another story but the ones the Christians the believers in Christ who weren't participating in Halloween I made this post to them I was like I seen a lot of believers in Christ shedding light and exposing how demonic of a holiday that Halloween was and praise God for that just make sure you keep that same stance in December when Christmas time comes around. Uh-huh. In conclusion, I just wanted to show you all that pagans today still celebrate these days and they know it belongs to them. I just ask my fellow brethren to look deeper into it. Don't let your flesh get you blinded. And again, I hope I wasn't coming off in a manner that was disrespectful that may have sounded disrespectful i just care for the body and i just want us to really think about these things spiritual war that we in satan knows he got a lot of believers by infiltrating certain things and sprinkling the name of god on the things that have nothing to do with god all truth is important because the truth has set you free all truth leads to christ yeshua said i am the way the truth and the life all right oh, guys I'll talk to y'all next time. I appreciate you guys fellowship with me. I gotta go. I'm out like I'm late for Bible study. Fast getaway. <laughs>